Yo, what's up, Psychonetics? Before we jump into the video, I do want to say that I stream on Twitch now. That's twitch.tv slash Psychonetic. I really appreciate it. If you head on over there, drop me a follow and catch me live Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. So today we're going to be talking about Hyperscape. It's a game that kind of came out of nowhere and honestly took me by surprise. I know some people were talking crap about the game, but I mean, I, I, I loved it. I enjoyed every minute of it and I wanted to take some time, uh, view some gameplay, of course, like we usually do. And I want to let you guys know, Psychonetics, what I thought about it. So without any further ado, let's get into the gameplay. Hyperscape starts out as like any other normal BR. You go in, you drop in, except you're in like a little pod. Looting items in game, however, is a little different. Yes, you have to pick up items. You don't drop with anything except for the hatchet. But when you pick up a weapon, besides picking up attachments, you're just finding duplicates for that weapon. As you can see down at the bottom right, there are four slots that start to fill up as you pick up the same weapon. As you do that, your magazine size increases as well as the damage output of that weapon. I really enjoy this because it takes a lot of the looting out of the game without it being gone completely. So you spend more time fighting in the game and less time looking for grips or, or attachments in any sort for that matter. In the game as well, besides just picking up weapons, there are also abilities that can be picked up as well. Some of these abilities will give you temporary invincibility. Some of these abilities will heal you. Some of these abilities will reveal other enemies that are in a close proximity of you. And I think it's, it's a really cool thing that keeps the pace up with the game. It makes it to where at any point a fight can be changed in your favor if things start to go south so in this game the zones work a little bit differently and they're called sectors so the game takes place in a virtual world and besides there being a circle or a gas or anything of that sort that kind of pushes you to the center the map from the sides start to deteriorate around you up to a point where they are no longer visible they will just go to a straight flat land, and that's when you'll start taking a little bit of damage. The damage you take here isn't a whole lot. Being outside of the zone isn't very punishing, unless, of course, people are firing on you. But you don't want to stay in zone for too long because you lose all cover the longer you're in the zone. Winner is chosen a little differently from other battle royales. Now, yes, it's the same as other BRs, where if there's only one team standing, of course, that team wins. However, things can also be changed by picking up what's called the crown. When the crown is picked up, the player now has 45 seconds to stay alive with the crown in hand in order for that team to win. If that person is killed, the crown is then dropped for the next player to pick it up. Now, you can make a choice here. Either you pick it up and start running around to try and win it for the team, or... You cover the crown and try to kill other teams as they try to push onto it. This can make for a very hectic last five team fights. There are things going on everywhere. It's extremely fast paced. Everybody's abilities at this point, including their weapons, are, are maxed out. So they're dealing a lot of damage. And there's really no room for error when it comes down to the last five squads. So that's basically how the game works. Um, they did have a solo game mode for a little bit where everything's about the same, except, of course, you're by yourself and the map was super foggy. Unfortunately, it was dropped on a holiday and I wasn't able to record that footage. But... I'm sure it'll come back. The gist is the same, except they put fog on the map, so the visibility is a little, a little tougher. They also took some weapons out of it. Um, as far as the weapons, there was a lot of balancing issues with a few of them, including the Hexfire, which was the minigun. It had 280 rounds at max capacity and dealt about 9 damage headshot. There was no cooldown on it at all. I mean, the weapon didn't heat up. So you people were just holding left click and the bloom was there, but it was very little bit. So it was pretty much a laser. There has been balances already to the hex that spreads the bloom a little bit more. So it's not as much as a spam weapon as it used to be. 
The Skybreaker also got a little bit of a nerf as well while it was in the uh, the test. It still does a good amount of damage, but nowhere near as bad as it used to. Probably one of my favorite weapons in the game, the Protocol, which is the sniper rifle. At max upgrade, it's one-shot headshot. As it goes up, I think right below it is about 95, which makes somebody really low. I think in-game, you have about 150 health total. It doesn't tell you, but that, that's kind of what I'm basing it off of, is I think it's about 150 health. You get a headshot with a sniper rifle, and you're down. Problem with the sniper rifle is there's no drop-off. And you really don't have to worry about distance that much. So it makes lining up shots pretty easy. Basically, what I'm trying to say is it's a laser. But overall, I really enjoyed this game. I think this game deserves a little bit more than some people were giving it. A lot of people were hating on the look of the game. But honestly, as things start to deteriorate, it actually helps game performance as well. Yeah, there were some server issues. Yeah, we had some points where we dropped out of a match. But it only happened a couple of times. And for what was essentially an open test that came out of nowhere... I think it played very well. It had parkour aspects in it as well that made it really fun to play. Again, it's super fast paced and the time to kill I actually enjoy. You don't feel like you're shooting a bunch of shields. You don't feel like you're you're shooting health bars all day. It's very rewarding to get a kill and overall my time in the test server I, I, I really enjoyed it. But the last day to play this game was the 7th. Um, I heard that it's going to come out full release on the 12th. I don't really have anything that can to confirm that. I also heard that there might be like a little closed beta on the 10th. But we're not going to go without the game for too long. I really, really l like the game. I really enjoy streaming it. One of the reasons why I do as well is there are events that viewers can vote for. Events like Zero Gravity. Events like... Uh, uh, infinite ammo uh an extra jump because you can double jump so the extra jump will give you three and just so much viewer interaction can come from the streams as well the viewers can change the tide to a game which i find really cool this game has a lot of potential yeah it had its bugs it needed a lot of balancing with some of the weapons but overall for a free to play game i really really enjoyed it so if you are interested in getting this game, it will be available on Uplay. I'm hearing that it's going to come out on the 12th. So again, we're not going to go without it for too long. Um, you can catch me streaming it over there on twitch.tv slash psychonetic. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and leave a like for me. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you want more content. And I will see you over on Twitch. Psycho out.